Hey everybody, it's JJM Jim. Welcome back to another episode of Vanilla Valley here in City Skylines, our tutorial slash Let's Play series. And last time, of course, we were putting up these really, really cool, unique buildings. And I think it's going to really start to develop our skyline. It's going to look quite nice, I do think. So what I thought we would do today is tackle a little bit more of this. I want to start to fill in these areas so we can start tackling some of the other forms of mass transit that we want to use. Now, did I put commercial? No, these are offices, okay. Yeah, what we're running into is a lot of people coming in all at once. And unfortunately, the usage of this roundabout is not gonna be ideal. Most people are going to try to merge. The, the Sims don't use roundabouts super well without mods. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you there. <laughs> they just don't. They just don't use them. They just don't use them really, really well. But hopefully once we get some more um, some mass transit going here in the city, we won't have that problem. In fact, what we should probably start to do already... And since we have money isn't really an issue, is we should take a look at trams and get that going. Now, we do need to put a tram depot down still. See how we can't make this tram line yet. We need to uh, put down the depot. The depot needs to be off of a road um, that has trams to it. Uh, but I think what will be the best bet... Hmm, here's what we should do. So obviously in our tram roads, we have several different options, right? We have the, the four lane, the two lane one way, the uh, two lane road in general. Then we have a just tram track and then a single tra way tram track. And that is what we used over here now, or I think we used this so people could, they could go back and forth. But I think for our purposes, what we can do is upgrade this road. Pull that out a little bit more. Bring this over. Okay. And then have it to come off of here. Because what I really don't want to have this on this main road. Because then the vehicles will spawn. And then they're going to immediately get dumped out onto the avenue. I want them to have a little bit more of a flow. So let's have it. Let's have them get dumped out onto here. Instead. Great. Great. Awesome. And just for fun, let's get a path through here. Yeah, looks nice. And we won't actually need this, but what I think we might do, and this is probably going to be mostly for looks, I don't anticipate us using this, but let's do this and then let's grab the one-way track and just make a small little cul-de-sac like we've been doing. Like so. There. Just as like a turnaround if need be. It's it's kind of a nice little extra fun feature to it, I suppose. <clears throat> so let's do that. Okay. So now that we have this down, we can start making tram lines. Here we go. So we have our basically, I don't know, oval fish shape uh, and so we're going to have two lines. One that's going to go one way around the circle. Uh, clockwise, if you will, I suppose, if we were looking at it like this, clockwise. And then one that's going counterclockwise. <clears throat> so let's set that up. We could start the lines anywhere we want, because basically it's just going to be a loop. So it doesn't really matter. So let's just start... Um, yeah, I think we'll have a, a stop here because we might have like a giant park here. So it might be nice to stop there in the future. Now, I don't generally like to keep tram line stops super close together. Um, I do like to separate them a bit, but they should also, you know, be aware of kind of where they're stopping and how often they are stopping. Um, if they stop too much, you're not going to have a lot of people at each stop, right? Because they're going to be able to walk to certain stops or if you have too many frequent stops then they're stopping all the time and they're blocking up 
different things and that's not what you want either so make sure that they're separated enough but you're gonna you kind of learn to judge how far things are just from experience and truthfully i don't really even know what's what's ideal especially on buses trams i think i've gotten that somewhat down but buses i have no idea i really don't it's hard we'll tackle buses in a, in a, in a later video as well but okay so i'm gonna make a stop here um, we have a park and some different things. There's also a crossing to the other side over here, which I think will be very helpful to our um, our Sims. Okay, get some smiley faces there. <clears throat> so I'm gonna skip this one. That feels a little too close to me. Perhaps it's not, but it feels close to me. So I'm gonna do another stop there. And then I'm gonna do another one about there because it's sort of in between here and they can have access to either side. And I am going to do one more stop on this side. I actually wonder, you know what? Let's back it up. I, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to back it up. I'm going to make this stop about there instead. Then here. Then here. Yeah, that gives me a little bit more. Then we're definitely going to stop here because this is where the uh, transit hub is going to be for monorail stop and also future buses. So, um, I don't like to keep them super close to the intersections if I can avoid it, especially big intersections that are crossing with a large cross street. So I'm not going to go here, but I will go here. Huh? And then just kind of eyeballing it, really. Again, not... Right here isn't going to be ideal. I'd like to go a little further. Maybe we go right about there. And right about there. There as well. And then it will connect up. <clears throat> Great. Now, the other side is very easy. Because now you just follow the same stops as you did on the other line. By the way, we're listening to the jazz station today. And if you don't, here's the thing. Lines can get finicky and sometimes unwieldy. And if you make a mistake, you can often right click to back up. But if you make a line and you're trying to move a stop and it's not working or whatever is just clogging you up, just go into this little magnifying glass Click on the line you want and just get rid of it and start over. Just redraw it. Honestly, I, I found that sometimes if you're trying to edit a line and you're getting confused or it's just not cooperating with you, just delete it and try it again. It's not the end of the world. All right, so as far as our trams are concerned, I'd like to make them our triple J green color. Because why not? Let's do that for both lines. Try to match it up as best as possible. Well, that's about right. And now what you can do too is if we go into our lines, this is, if you hover over this, it will start to highlight and flash which line is which, which is very cool. So I am going to make this one our northbound line. You don't really need to label them if you, if you don't need to, but if you have a ton of train lines, tram lines in your city, which I don't anticipate we're going to have many more than this. But if you do, it's good to name them because it's helpful when you're trying to figure out, you know, all the different things. So as you saw, they kind of spawned out of here. You, What you can also do, and this came with Mass Transit uh, DLC, is it will show you how many vehicles are on each line. And you can also see where they are on the line, which is really cool and very helpful. As you can see, they are getting very filled. Now, some of the later ones are not as much. But there's 242 people at this stop. It's quite a bit of people. So people are definitely, definitely using this. And you can modify how many vehicles you have. Um, here we can slide this. Can we move this? No? I thought we could move this. Oops. Uh, let me go back into that menu real quick. Okay. So you can also modify how many vehicles. So you can add more. This just, I don't really know how this is calculated, to be honest with you. I think it's based on how long the line is. 
Um, oh, here we go. It counts on the public, or the budget transit transport budget and this modifier. But as far as how it determines how many vehicles to spit out, I don't quite know what that algorithm is, truthfully. Um, but sometimes I do find that the AI spits out a very good number of vehicles. This to me feels like it's maybe a bit much. You can kind of gauge how many people are at your stops. This feels like maybe it's a little much. So I'm gonna go down to say eight vehicles and now three will get kicked out. Southbound. Um... Oh, interesting. Is it doing it for both? Oh, I see, I have to click on the other one. Gotcha, okay. Now, northbound, or southbound seems to have a lot more than northbound. Isn't that interesting? It's possible that because this was made second, it spit out all the vehicles and they already had one go around. I think that might be the case because they're all kind of bunched up in the same spot. It's tough. You, you know, you can, you can, you could take a look at this forever. Um, but much like traffic, uh, make make a choice, make a decision, uh, and then leave it for a while before coming back to it. Because if you make too many adjustments all at the same time, you're not going to really know which one's actually impacting it. It's because there's, you know, there's a lot of people here. But as these start to spill in, let's go back to the northbound line. Fourteen, yeah, because there's only, you know, there's three. This one's full. It's sort of like we need a few more between here. It's kind of hard to to separate them, you know, kind of, you know, keep them. But as they move and as they have to, like, stop its intersections or things, they will start to kind of separate a little bit more. They won't be all so bunched up, ideally. But, yeah, so these two are going to be coming here. You know, it's not like there's a flood of people, right? It's uh, 40, that's okay. It's pretty substantial. Yeah, these are all starting to make their way down though, because these are all empty. So. You kind of almost have to wait until they've had one full rotation before you can start making adjustments. And perhaps we made an adjustment too early there. I don't know if we made it uh, too early of a call. It doesn't seem like we did. We're getting full trams. There's less than 100 people at each stop. They're gonna... There's empty cars ahead of them. Bump it up to three speed just to see how this all operates. Because, yeah, these are all full. But as these start to snake down... Because what you want is full cars, right? Because that means that every car should be full. That, that would be ideal, because that means that you're not overspending, you're not having, you're not wasting money on too many cars. But you also don't want, you know, a thousand people waiting at a stop, right? Yeah, these are starting to fill up. It's interesting that one way, I mean, math, the, the doing traffic um, or transport like this is, is fascinating. It truly is. Truly, truly is. I always futz with it. I always make it better, for sure. But yeah, this is a nice quick walk for them to come down. I might even... Now, when they're coming off of here, can they... Here, what I'm going to do is go rogue right here. don't know if they're going to ever use that over just walking down the street from the monorail, but just in case. Yeah, cool. Well, that's good that we have that established. That will hopefully take some of the cars off the road. That would be, uh, that would be ideal. However, you know, this straight shot through here is still probably going to be faster especially for like these internal areas and that might mean a nice bus route going up and down this this strip because we have trams going on the outside 
Putting a bus route up and down here may be a nice thing to have. Yeah, because buses can get really confusing at times too, and we'll tackle them at a later date, but we have a lot of demand for industry, which is great because we need to put down more offices, which we shall do. So we kind of pop some in there. Pop a little bit of commercial, some more offices, they're coming in right away. Let's do a big pocket of that there. I kind of want commercial to be, I think we'll do some residential. We haven't done a lot of residential or, you know, really any on this side, but facing the park like this, I think would be really really nice and then these can also be apartment buildings I think we may have talked about these being commercial but I think I'd like them to be residential instead you know overlooking the park like that's that's high property value right there this can all be that Buildings are sprouting in right away. Right away. And that's really good. These are all abandoned, and I'm not real sure why. Oh, it's power. It's the power. Right. Um, here's another little trick you can do to jump power. So if you have the disasters DLC. Did we talk about this in, a, in an earlier episode? I think we did. I totally think we did. Did we not? Well, it's hard to remember. If I talked about this before, I apologize. But under the disasters DLC, there's this little earthquake sensor. And this actually has a radius of power. It creates a radius of power around it, but you can pop it anywhere. It does not need to be snapped to a road. And it sort of, to me, just looks like a power transformer that you would see like on the side of a road. So what we can do Let's just kind of hide this little guy. Spin it with right click. And I'm wondering if we can hop the power. Indeed we can. And there we go. Now we have power. Sneaky, sneaky. Just like that. This might look a little conspicuous in the middle of all of this without any other kind of roads and stuff going through it. But if we fill this in with trees, perhaps make some more paths, we can almost make this its own park. You know, have a walkable park inside of here. Really use the whole space of this interchange to be a little bit more. And we could do that. Great. Okay. That, that demand snapped right back up. So let's keep going there. Um, yeah. Uh, on this main road here. Let's do some more there. This can all be as well. Same with right here. And we can always put down more unique buildings later. We can, we can put down more plazas, more parks and things like that. But for now, until we kind of get a lay of, of the land a little bit, I think it's gonna be okay that we just sort of do it this way. Yeah, see what's happening here is see how they're all trying to merge. They're not even really, wait a minute. Well, maybe if I wasn't a fool. This is the wrong type of road. It's not even two lane. This I had for some reason as two way highway. Yikes. But see, that happens, right? You make those mistakes. I was wondering why this is looking so weird. And I didn't do it anywhere else, so that's good. But. Because what was happening is, because this turned into a two-lane, you know, one lane going each way, they were all trying to merge into the right lane. And they're still going to try and merge Goofy like this guy. They're all going to, yeah. You know, they think, I need to be in this right lane now because I need to turn right all the way over here, you know. Yeah, it's just, how they process their moves can be a little funny. It is kind of interesting how that really almost didn't help this. 
<laughs> it only just made this probably this roundabout more compact now. But again, so many of these are cars, right? If we can get some of these cars off, and it's a lot of people that are just moving in. We're going to have a lot of that right away. So we can't really judge that traffic until this is kind of all filled in and settled, and everyone is just sort of going about their regular daily life. And if we're still having trouble, then we can make adjustments. But let's not get too hasty with it right away. Again, I think this is going to be more like a... A leisure district. Did we determine that? Yes, we did. So this downtown is going to be sort of like high density. This side is going to be more tourist. Um, <clears throat> or maybe not even tourism. Leisure, I think. Tourism, we'll, we'll probably do it at a different island for tourism. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I think that's going to be the, the way we go with that. Cool. Alright, we have some death problems. I am, you know what I'm going to do? Preemptively, you really can't have too much death care. You can, because it costs you money, but you really can't um, for, in terms of the value of it. It's just really handy to have, because you just don't want dead people backed up, because then it just makes people upset, and, and for good reason, right? I don't want dead people just hanging out and, you know, it's just, it's not ideal. Lots of backup. Yeah, and they're all trying to, of course, get into this far right lane. Some do use the middle, but, you know, most don't. Oh, I have dynamic weather on. Uh, because of our stream that we're doing, we have dynamic weather on. Because we're doing a snow map right now. Um, I'll leave it on. I'll leave it on for now. Still more demand for industry or offices. Wow. <clears throat> I think that this Grand Central Terminal should be used. I don't believe we've placed this. No. But I think it should be built, and I'm going to put it actually right over here. It's going to take away some of those offices, but I think that is a handsome, quite a handsome building to have. Yeah. It's not tall, but it's it's got a nice edge to it, and of course, you know, it, it feels... Feels good. It's like a really nice building. I like it. But what I was looking for is is that office park. Where's that office park at? Official park. Oh, did I already put this down? Where did I put this? Where did I put this park? Oh, did I put it over here? Oh, I totally did. I totally did. Huh. You know what? I don't like it there anymore. I want it here. I want it in the center of our offices. So I'm going to put it there. And in its place, we can pop down something else. Like... Got me another. Uh... Here, there's another thing we can use. It's the tricky part about vanilla, and only being able to use those buildings once. Oh, would this fit there? You know what? Oh, I've made all these. I see. Um, I don't like it anymore, so we're gonna get rid of it. Don't ever be afraid to change your mind. That is the beauty of this game. That fits perfectly right there. And this offers us some picnic tables and some chairs, some paths. Now it is a true park over here as well. Very, very good. And I think that's just a fine change. Great. Over here, I'm gonna add just 
I'm just gonna build. Oops, oh, let me do that. Really? Is it too close to the? Oh. Can I build this one? Huh? The path is just like too wide or something. Strange. Well, you can do that. Great. Yeah, that that it gets some some height differential, which is really nice. And then off of there. Hmm. Mm, not quite. Not quite. Yeah, playground doesn't doesn't feel right either. Actually, that also fits right there. Same kind of park. And then we'll just put this path on it. I can't do that, but I can go as close there, and then it'll just sort of end. That's gonna be okay. More parks. They love their parks. Offices? More offices? All this. Great. Yeah. See how our demand for residential is so low? That's actually, I'm a little shocked by it. A little shocked. More commercial. block right here and I think I'd like to do just a little bit of residential on this side I don't anticipate all this going in but let's separate them by a little bit of the offices the uh, high density commercial is very loud but sometimes, in my opinion, you sort of have to just roll with that a little bit. It's not, you know, I don't know, it's not going to be the end of the world. And honestly, there are giant residential towers next to giant commercial towers in real life. So, in a way, kind of like, deal with it. Actually, hold on. I'm going to put more commercial in this block. Then this block is going to be offices. There we go. Definitely along there. This is all definitely gonna be commercial. Oh, and I did not set this, so I need to do that. Whoops. Um, now, as far as the districts go, I want to make only this part make this part leisure whoops amity heights is going to be a not policies but we'll establish it here it's going to be leisure specialization and this little bit can be some tourism just for a little variety Actually, maybe I should flip it the other way. Yeah, I'm gonna flip it the other way. Poplar Hills is gonna be uh, leisure, and this is gonna be tourism. Yeah, now it's gonna get rid of all those buildings and and hurt a little bit of our, our demand, but they'll they'll come back. They will definitely come back. That's gonna increase. I mean, yeah, the traffic's gonna be bad for a while. It just is. It just is. But we'll deal with it as it comes. Um, yeah. I don't think I want to actually put anything in front of this, even though it's on this road. 
Well, can I have it on this road? Oh, I can't. I see, that's why I didn't do that. I was like, why didn't I put it on this road? That's why. But I don't think I'm gonna put anything on here just for that reason. I want I don't want there to be a building blocking the arch from view. Yeah. Everybody, I think that's gonna do it. I think that is gonna do it for this episode. We are expanding, expanding, expanding. And more importantly, we got our transit hub down. Um, not our transit, our tram hub down, and that is really, really great. Awesome. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Please put any suggestions or thoughts or comments in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next episode of Vanilla Valley here in City Skylines. Bye, everybody.